Jax. Mr. Luke Spencer. Such a pleasure to see you again. It's good to see that you're not as dead as everyone thought. Thank you. It's good to see that you're not as quick on the draw as you used to be. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. That noble effort. Ah, such a pity it didn't work. No, it isn't. The reason I'm here, I'm not here to shoot you. I came to talk. Well, let's talk. Ah, oh, you seem tired, old friend. I'm not your friend. Did you come all this way to become so surly? I mean, if anyone's supposed to be upset, it's me. Oh, and how do you arrive at that twisted conclusion? Look, you killed my guards. We're trying to make an honest living. I'm sure they'll be missed. And you tried to shoot me, too. I mean, I am a man of many flaws. But my manners are impeccable. Oh, yeah. Very polite of you to poison the water supply of Fort Chuck. Well, you weren't even in town at the time. My daughter was. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I suppose that was rude, huh? Well, let me make it up to you. How about a cup of tea or a brandy or a cure for polonium poisoning? That's why you're here, aren't you? You're looking for the cure of what ails us both. You see, Helena Cassadine infected you with the same radioactive isotope the Balkan introduced into my bloodstream. He did it with the bullets. How did uh, Helena get to you? Earring. Ah! <laughs> Our original. And here we are, like shipmates on a slowly sinking lifeboat. You, me, and our mutual friend, Sean Donnelly. Oh, I hate to disappoint you. But he isn't a friend of yours, either. Oh, he is. I'll have you know that when I was indisposed, he very kindly claimed the $88 million for me. I know. I followed the money and found him. Yes, in exchange for his assistance, I supplied him the remedy for the symptoms of polonium poisoning. And I assume he paid it forward by sharing it with you. Well, what can I say? He's a giver. Well, as though there was only so much to spare. I can see by your current state that the remedy is wearing off. Well, you look in fine health. So if the offer still stands for a drink, I'll take whatever you're having. I'm really mad that you told our friend Donnelly about my lab in Corinth, Pennsylvania. I mean, it was a real chore to have to pick up and go. You seem to do it quickly. <laughs> yes, I was long gone. I was up and you and Miss Sutton arrived, leaving you to tackle with Dr. Oberecht. I hope you are... Miss Sutton and I handled Dr. Oberecht. Oh, did you now? Would I be here if I hadn't? It's rather counterproductive, don't you think? I mean... Why make an enemy of the good doctor when you could have appealed to her scientific side, persuaded her to help you? Is that how you got Madame Curie to help you? Oh, no, no, no. I came to Dr. Obrecht as a simple patient. You know. And she took very good care of me. That's until her superior showed up. César Faison. <laughs> as it turns out, Faison is, was on a quest to fund the cure. Not wanting to foot the bill himself, he, of course, wanted to extort money from me. He wanted an enormous sum. 88,111,000. The dead man's hand in dollars. That's right. It was sufficient to cover Faison's price. And it didn't matter that you had to poison an entire town. It's the cost of doing business. Alas, the collateral damage was higher than I anticipated. So then you got Madame Mengele's help. To my surprise, the good daughter Obrecht has a bigger heart than her sturdy exterior shows. She took pity on me. Did she find you a cure? No, she did not. Oh. But she did the next best thing. She found a brilliant doctor to manufacture one. You're telling me that the, the, the doctor Obrecht couldn't finish the job, so she found it. A doctor who could. Wow, you're keeping uh, the conversation rather well for someone whose organs are shutting down. And where is this alleged doctor that you found? Right behind that door. Developing a cure for what used to be a terminal condition. How's it going? Oh, splendidly. Why? Oh, come sit, please. There you go. Because I'm hoping you've got enough for the whole class. And why should I share? You've made it abundantly clear that you're no friend of mine. Well, I am dying. 
Yes. And I did secure this place for you by killing the harpy who owned it. So, hmm. in a way, you owe it to both of us. Yeah, well, I suppose I could do it in Helena's memory. Yes, you yes. could. Yeah. There's only one problem. What? I can't. And the guy... You can't share the cure with me or you won't. Well, I could say that I simply refuse. You see, poisoning Port Charles and extorting $88 million is bloody hard work. Yeah. I admire your fortitude. And mm. I deny your determination. I mean, why would I share the remedy? All you've done is chase me around the globe from one end of the earth to the other. Yes, and that's been bloody hard work. Don't you think I deserve some, some sort of reward for that? Some little trinket like my life? Well, at this point, it's moot. I'm sorry, Luke, but I can't share it with you. Why the hell not? Because it's not personal. My doctor said there isn't enough medication. It can only cure one person. No, no. Maybe your genius doctor can find a way to make two doses. Well, she's a genius, not an alchemist, and she's made it abundantly clear that it's impossible. Anyway, it was lovely to have this chat with you. Um, make yourself comfortable. Yes. I'm going to check on the good doctor and... Uh, what you suffer, the deterioration of your major organs. I didn't come all this way to die here. Oh, really? Well, as you wish. Guard, uh, take my radioactive friend there, away to die. Thank you. See you. I've been singing your praises, darling. Any chance you've done anything to deserve them? 